Welcome to my channel, my Sawdust. I'm your host, Darius. Today, we're getting ready for basically Halloween, and I got a great project for you in basically three steps. One, it's a holiday item. Two, it only takes two of these planes to make three lanterns. And what kind of lanterns am I talking about? I'm talking about these. But they're pretty simple. Let's step it up a little bit. Join me as I show you how I made them. All right, so you could go to your Lowe's, Home Depot, or wherever you can find these planks. You can get the cedar ones. They're usually about anywhere between three and five dollars. Or you could get the pine ones, which are basically about two to four dollars, depending on your location. So I got the cedar ones. I like the cedar. You can do the sizes the way you want, but the ones I did are as follows. Out of you basically need two to make three of them and then you'll have some extra pieces to do whatever you want with them. one board you could pretty easily make just one and then you'll have pieces left over and with the scraps you can kind of fancy it up a little bit depending on your design you choose to make for me i ended up cutting the two boards into a few pieces so here's the cut list you want to follow along all right so here's the cut list pretty much there's you could do it two ways obviously you're gonna need two of the uh, boards so you could do one board, basically seven cuts at 10 inches. You should have enough depending on the quality of the wood itself. Sometimes, you know, right now the 5 8 thickness is usually about a half inch. So you might have to play around with the measurements just slightly, but you could do basically seven cuts on the one board, trimming off the very bottom, and then hopefully that dog ear won't really affect it too much. Then the rest would be the second board, you do three cuts at eight inches and then six cuts at seven inches. Or the second cut list could be basically taking your first board, getting four 10 inch cuts out of that, two eight inch, and then two seven inches. And on your second board, you're basically going to do three 10 inch uh, cuts with one eight and then four seven inch. Okay, so you have your cut list ready, depending on which way you went and figured out the best usage of those boards. This is the next step. So you save your 10 inch, <laughs> you save your 10 inch boards for the actual face that you're gonna get. Then you basically use the other one set aside. So we're making three of these. So set three aside for your faces. The other ones you basically will cut in half. So depending on how wide your board actually was, you'll get two even sides. Then the eight inch is basically gonna be your back section. Why is it shorter? Well, so you have access to put a tea light or an LED puck. I ended up using the LED pucks, which are great because they're also submersible. So summertime, you have a pool, toss them in there. Pretty much weatherproof. So if it rains outside, they'll last a little bit longer and each one comes with a remote. So once you have all your pieces set, set aside, you'll obviously have some spares and I will tell you what you could do with the other ones. Now, when you have a few more of the uh, 10 inch boards left over, those are meant to basically meant to basically also cut in half. These will be used for more of the decorative add-ons to it. Cause yeah, you could just slap a top and bottom on them and call it a day. But to kind of give it a little bit more extra look to them, you just take the couple extra pieces that you have, obviously we don't want to waste any of the boards, is take this and then basically cut, for what I did with my measurements, is basically cut two of these strips into four inches wide. So they're about, you know, two and something. Now they're gonna be about four inches. You get two of, two of them. So it takes your second one to the same thing. Now you have enough to put on top, kind of center it. And then the uh, last little piece, you can trim it a little bit shorter and put that on top. So now you have your very top covering the top, and then a little, little addition, and then a very top one. Or depending on how you, what kind of design you do, you can make it look more of a step, like a stem from a pumpkin. So the next step is to get your face. So now the next step is making the faces. So there's multiple ways of doing it. And if you're doing it just one time, you can just basically print a couple out in your printer, cut them out, draw them onto the actual wood itself, and then cut them out. Now, multiple ways. You can drill pilot holes. So once you have it traced out, you drill a few holes to kind of give you a little bit of a wiggle room when you're trying to saw out the pieces. Now, you can use multiple ways. The simpler way than most people have at home will be a jigsaw. So you make a the pile hole drilled big enough for your blade to fit in, and then you just start cutting out your pieces that you need to cut out. Second one is I've seen 
a few people to use a router. They made a little bit of a jig and they would start routing out the pieces. That's another route. Or you can, if you have a scroll saw, it's a little bit tedious, but to me, honestly, I think that's probably the easiest way just because you get those fine curves in and uh, better straight edges. It also depends on your design. So if you have more curves, I guess you could use a jigsaw, but in my experience, the scroll saw was a little bit easier, even though there is some mishaps from time to time, but it's just a very thin blade. You could get those curves nice and tight edges. So it's all up to you on how you do this process. Now, for me, I was going to be basically making a whole bunch and offering them to be purchased. So if you're going to mass produce these things, you basically create yourself a jig. And that goes along with every woodworking project you do. First one always takes longest because you're trying to figure out how to make it faster and you're building a jig at the same time. So my easiest thing was basically to go to my library, which has a maker space in its facility, which has a laser cutter, CNC, uh, t-shirt maker, sewing machine, 3D printers, and everything else. So I'm going to utilize it. So I had some acrylic left over from a previous project. So I brought that with me to use and whatever I needed extra, I ended up purchasing at the library. You can use all the designs that you've chose from the internet and just go to the software. Uh, I ended up using Inkscape that was able to kind of take an image and make sure it's an image like a vector image for the software to read it as to, to make sure the laser can cut, understand it, and basically does a cutting for you. And then you basically have little templates. Still have the backing on this one. So I just kind of went through, picked the designs I liked, seemed kind of festive, and I did a couple for the pumpkin style, I mean, your typical kind of like what you would use on your actual pumpkins. A little bit of a goofy one, a little bit goofy. And then I figured, you know, those are kind of a little boring. So I was off, gonna offer a few that are actually a little bit more creative. So you can do the plain, the cedar or pine look, and then call it a day, put a little seal it up, you're good to go. But I'm gonna step it up a little bit. Go big or go home, right? So I ended up choosing three versions to kind of spice it up a little bit. And one of them is Frankenstein. Pretty cool. So I use this one as the base of one of my designs and as you will see later, I'll walk you through that one. Another one was the all famous ghost face and everybody's favorite Jack. So with this one it's pretty fine. So with this one I kind of found out easily is just put the template on, get a little spray paint quickly, a couple dabs and then it kind of transposes on itself and then you can just kind of follow the lines there. All the other ones were easy. You just trace around and you're good to go. Now you can search the internet easily. Google hot jack-o'-lantern faces. You'll get a whole abundance. Then you just basically print it out and then you can cut it out, trace it, however you want to do it. It's all up to you. Obviously we're working. There's a million ways of doing one thing. So let's go to the next step. So now to put it all together, pretty straightforward. The way I did it was get these two lined up, put some glue on, line it up this side, get this side. Now if you have a brad gun, you can use a brad nailer, get a couple of hits, kind of hold it, hold it together while it, the glue does dry, and you can continue working as it sets. So now you gotta get the back piece. So once you have this pretty much Glue it and set, you take your back piece, which is shorter, line it up nice and even at the top, and same thing, you get the glue on each side, put this down, and again, you could nail it in, and it's basically set. All right, so we're gonna use our imagination. We're gonna imagine these are the uh, six by the seven pieces that we cut. This one's a little longer, just because I use up <laughs> on the previous project before I made this video. Same thing here, you basically put the bead of your uh, glue and then you basically get it glued on. We're using our imagination. Again, couple nails, you're good to go. And same thing with the top when it's up here, same thing 
glue all the way, all the way around and place the top. Again, put a couple of nails, you're good to go. And it should look something like this. So it's gonna be looking like this. You got your hat, the bottom base. Then with the other pieces that I told you cut in four inches, basically you're starting to kind of build yourself this to put on top. So if you're are a little bit wider, you know, so you're adding that little top hat kind of thing. And then if you're going with the pumpkin style, look, you could get one more or stick up a little bit, paint a different color, and they could look like this. And as you can see, got these painted orange, and these are my pumpkin traditional jack-o'-lantern looks with the little green stem. Pretty snazzy. Pretty cool project. So you can leave them plain and basically have your kids help you paint them. And there's different ways that you could do it. You just keep it the way it is. But I figured you put the lantern in there, or the LED light, it's only really festive during the nighttime with the glow to them. I figure, why not have your decorations be exposed throughout the whole day? So that's why I decided to get them painted, just like these. I just love how these Frankensteins ended up looking like they have little shower caps. Just got one more to finish up. So once everything is taped up, I'm going to put some moss green on there. I like the color. kind of has that real Frankenstein look. Flip them upside down to kind of get the bottom half, get the paint flow down, and then I'm going to flip them up and spray the whole thing. can see they're pretty pretty creative here my pumpkin version here's the Frankenstein's the ghost face Jack and they're I think they're pretty cute my favorite is obviously Frankenstein so now you've seen all the possibilities of the designs that you can basically make so feel free to use my designs or check out my website mysawdust.com if you want to purchase them already made hit me up on the website Otherwise, uh, you know, it's all done, but let's go check it out on how they look like outside. So I hope you enjoyed the process. As you can see, there's multiple ways of doing it and creating a look. So you can leave them plain, you can paint them up just like a jack-o'-lantern or take that one little extra step and get a little more creative. And then if you're gonna try to reproduce these and sell, obviously, Staging is key, but if you see my short, check that out. But basically in a nutshell, try to cross merchandise. So you have other items that you're trying to sell, put them all together. If you have planners, it's fall season, kind of obsolete right now, but you can repurpose that planner into a planner for fall, fall flowers. Check out these. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about merchandise your jack-o'-lanterns and your planters that you've made and try to still sell them year-round. That's my build and it was easy as one, two, and three. One project, two boards, three items. So I hope you liked this video. Hopefully it gave you some inspiration to make create your own. It would be greatly appreciated if you guys subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, add any comments. So until the next video, I will see you then. Go make something.